Hi folks, welcome back to Manly Kitchen. Today I'm back on Chile. I'm doing Chile, Colorado. And it's just been a really busy day. I've been editing videos all day for Bass Lessons HQ, taking a bunch of calls about the new CD that's coming out. And I've got a little bit of a window here that I'm going to get my Colorado simmering. Then I'm going to finish up my work, have a little bit of dinner, and head over to Gary Mendoza's jam session. Now, as far as the Colorado goes, the first thing you got to do is prepare the sauce. And there's a separate video and a separate recipe on that. So check that out first so you know how to make the sauce. And then this video is about taking that sauce and making an authentic chili Colorado. So let's turn around into the kitchen and have some fun. Now, this is all I've got to use today. My stew meat, my chili Colorado sauce. I got two bags of it that I defrosted and then I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil and some flour to brown the meat. And that's it. First thing I'm going to do is dust the meat with some flour. So I'm going to put it all in there. I'm going to sprinkle some Wondra. Now, I've told you before, I like Wondra flour because it's sifted so finely that it really has a hard time lumping up in your gravies and whatnot. We just need a light coating, but we're going to need a little more than that. Notice how I started light. I can always add more, but you can't take it out once it's in there. That goes for a lot of things in cooking. Okay, now I'm ready to brown it up. Now I heated my pan, then I put my oil in, I let that come up to temperature dropped a few drops of water in there just to check and make sure it was doing okay. Now I'm ready to do some browning. The secret here is to not put things too closely together. So if you have to do it in batches, don't be afraid of that. The reason you want to leave a lot of space is because if you crowd it too close together, What's really going to happen is most of the cooking is going to be steaming. And that's not what you want. You want to get that nice browning all around. You want each side, or at least as many sides as possible, to actually hit the pan and the oil and get a browning. So we're going to let this go for a minute. We're just going to keep flipping them. Turn them till all sides are browned. And when these are done, I'll set them out to drain on some paper towels. I'll put another batch in. In terms of actual time in the kitchen, this is where most of the time goes, is in doing these batches, but trust me, it's worth it. You know, uh, I do chili with all kinds of meat. I mean, if you've seen my other videos on this, um, you know, i got trash pot chili that uses ground beef. Uh, I've done uh, roasts in a slow cooker. Uh, I've cut up ribeyes and uh, browned those and then poured some Colorado sauce over it. I've even done a filet mignon and then just put the Colorado sauce over like any, you know, like a mushroom gravy or something. This actually is a, a tougher cut. It's a stew cut, but I'm going to simmer it for quite a while while I continue to work. So it's going to soften up just fine. Uh, and as a matter of fact, you don't have to simmer it in a pot. If you want to do it all day in a slow cooker, that's not a problem at all. Just make sure you brown your meat first so that it'll hold its shape longer. Okay, all of the meat is browned, so now I'm going to go ahead and scrape out the bottom of the pan. So, ready to go. Let's move on. The first thing I want to do is I want to adjust my fire as low as I can get it without it going out. There we go. Now I'm going to put the pot back on. The reason I'm doing that is because simmering is not boiling. There goes my first bag of sauce. Here comes my second. Oh, it just smells wonderful. Now, I'm just going to take my meat and in it goes. So, even though the work's done, and all it's got to do is simmer for a while. The hardest part is still ahead of me, folks. And that's that I'm going to have to smell this for the next couple of hours, wishing I could be eating it. 
Mm -hmm. Oh my. Okay, so I'm gonna let that go for a while, check back on it from time to time. Sure, let's do it. How much lead time do we need? Uh-huh. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. This is what a good simmer looks like. You can see it's not bubbling all over the place and it's bubbling just a little bit. That's got a high enough temperature that it's cooking the meat, it's tenderizing it, but it's not burning it, it it's not abusing anything in the sauce. Everybody gets to stay happy and hang out with each other. So don't be afraid to turn your heat down and just keep moving it, moving it. it you know, if you have a real problem, just move the pan off the heat a little bit and that'll slow things down. Of course the most important part of this whole thing is the sauce itself. So you can check out the video on that either on YouTube or if you're watching this on Manly Kitchen just look at the bottom of the article and you'll find a link over to the Chili Colorado sauce and also the other chilies that I do with it. Man that is good. I don't know how much longer I can wait, y'all. I really don't. Mm. Boy, that's looking good. Got about another hour to go, and then I'm going to have to serve it up. Uh, I'm going out to Gary Mendoza's Blues Jam at the uh, Folsom Sports Garage tonight, so I'm not going to eat a whole lot. I'm just going to have a small bowl of the chili and some tortillas. Uh, you could also do cornbread. I've even seen biscuits done with it in the South. Some of my friends do that. Um, Obviously, refried beans or, uh, or Mexican rice, uh, you can find a recipe for that on Manly Kitchen as well. Uh, and uh, if you wanted to, uh, a nice salad with some avocado slices and tomato over some shredded lettuce, maybe some guacamole. A lot of things you can have fun with with this one. Here's one reason to have extra Colorado sauce in the pot. Siphon some off and have yourself a hot beverage. That's it. I'm done waiting. I'm eating. Let's go. Oh, finally, I get to eat this. Oh, man. Look at that, y'all. Is that gorgeous or what? Mmm. Chili's done. Oh, daddy. You know, there's a bite to the, the stew. It's not just falling apart like it would in a slow cooker, but it's still very tender. Tastes wonderful. I, I'm, this is it. I'm so happy. Y'all, I'm going to cut the camera off and go eat. I, I just got to have this now. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. Chili Colorado. And I got to tell you, I'm a really happy boy right about now because it came out very nicely. Uh, the key to that, uh, other than the sauce itself, of course, is to brown the meat and then let it simmer as long as you can let it go. And if you've got a crock pot and you can put it in there after you've browned it, even better, let it go all day. Okay. Um, let's see, we've already gone through what to serve it with, so we're good there. I've got to clean up and get over to Gary Mendoza's jam, so I'm going to jet out of here pretty quick. Uh, before I go, though, if you're on YouTube, uh, first off, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel so you'll know about the new videos when they show up. But you can also find the video for the Colorado sauce and some of the other things I use it for. If you're on the ManlyKitchen.com website, search the recipes there. If you look under By Region, there's actually a chili category just for these things, okay? So, I'm Lane. This is Manly Kitchen. And until next time, don't forget... Play with your food.